great. Remember that this morning we was here? She drove by and she stopped us, came over down here? for 10 minutes, taking picture over there. Where? Oh, that, the that, that, over there. Red? Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, she was talking about yeah. the greatest, um, the biggest uh, swimming pool in the whole world. Oh, oh over here? Look at that. Oh. And then it's rebuilt. Oh, is that? I don't yeah. recall that, yeah.
No. <laughs> yeah. Cosmos Hotel in Moscow. I'm going to go to the museum. It is a okay, yeah. picture here. Uh -huh. This is a memorial park. Yeah. Uh, yeah.
gasoline is just a uh, for uh, one liter, so one dollar, one liter. So about five dollar, about five dollar a gallon or something a gallon. Rumbling. Uh, on uh, our right, we're going to pass by uh, uh, the only entrance to Kremlin for official cars. There's no regular traffic there in Kremlin, but President and several other people can... Uh, here they are, uh, uh, all of Moscow was inside the walls of Kremlin during the first centuries uh, of, uh, first two centuries of existence. And the walls are on one of the tops of uh, Kremlin. Uh, these stars are quite large, they are over three meters and they rotate with the wind. When it is windy you can notice, be, uh, notice it because otherwise they would be broken. Uh, this uh, in front of us is a, a nice uh, yellow building, which is former arsenal, built by Peter the Great at the very end of the 17th century. Later it was surrounded by cannons, there are quite many, their number is about 800, and they are French war trophies, taken from Napoleon after his panic retreat from Moscow. They were a bit too uh, heavy to carry them back home, he had to leave them. <laughs> Uh, and this horrible building, which gives us some nice friendly <laughs> shade, uh, is the latest addition to Kremlin. It was built by Nikita Khrushchev in 1961. Yeah. 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 In the 1920s, there they lived Lenin, later Stalin. Now it is the office of the president in this very building. We mentioned our presidents live anywhere they wish as private people, which is quite practical because they uh, don't need to move what was uh, built in 1930s as a school for red commissars. And it looks very discreet as far as older buildings are concerned. It's the In the following way, they dug a the hole world. in the ground. Inside they put the molding tool. And then they poured the hot metal. When the metal became hot, the bell was complete. They took this bell out of the hole, uh, put it on wooden beams, and it was covered with wood. Certified. Uh, certified to, uh, so, okay. I learn. 
pass phải pass để đi coi giống như nào ở đâu đấy Free is the private cathedral for the royal family. They attended services here every day and uh, Russian royalty was baptized and wedded in this cathedral. This white building uh, uh, on our right is called Faceted Palace. It is the oldest secular building built 1480. Otherwise, it's churches uh, which are so old, but this is the oldest secular building. This is a part of the royal residence. The ambassadors were received, negotiations were conducted and such like. This white arch with double-headed eagle on top and the steps in Russian are called Krasnaya Krylso, which means red entrance, though the color is evidently white. This is another proof that the word red meant beautiful. And uh, this did not exist in the Soviet time, because after October Revolution, this arch and the steps were destroyed. And when Yeltsin came to what you see now, I mean, this arch and the steps, this is a replica. He wanted to uh, uh, connect some of the tribute power. For the same reason, it was uh, reconstructed by Yeltsin. Partly, the inauguration ceremony of the president starts on these very steps as well. Uh, this is year 1480. Uh, it has quite a long name for such a tiny building, the Church of the Deposition of the Sacred Rome. It is so little because it was the private church for Russian patriots. And behind you can see a very picturesque palace with little gold domes. This is called Tsaritsa's Chamber Palace. It was a female part of the royal residence where Tsaritsa and Tsarevnas lived. And there was a small church right there in case they wanted to confess about some sins not in the presence of their husband. Here to not to be found. Here, this is the oldest building, completed the year 7, uh, 1479. Uh, this is Bell Tower in front of the oldest Bell Tower. Uh, this oldest building in Moscow. That's why the upper part was built as a watchtower. Wow. 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 Chết đó, bà thấy mất bốn đồng mà cũng đâu có muốn đi. À. Nhưng mà nhiều khi không có tiền sao? Ờ. Cái đó không đi. Illumination. Ai nói? Ai nói đi lên. Bà nói nhìn giống như Disneyland. Bà hả? Ừ, bà nói. Ủa, bà biết lấy ra sao? Bà... Chắc bà có đi, đã có đi à. LA rồi mà không biết.
Chứ nếu không nó mở rồi mà nó không bán được làm sao nó mở để không nào Phải không? À. Phải có người mua chứ Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi và hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để Uh, just a little bit further up from here and the the monuments would show uh, that you were going from one republic to another it's coming up here on the left hand side it's looking uh, rather weathered but this uh, cement monument on the left hand side that has uh, yeah. a picture of the russian flag and the belarusian flag on it so that is the border point between the two countries and the monument you can see beyond it uh, it has listed the names of all the cities between Moscow and Minsk it also had on it rather odd things but it had uh, showing where there were parking spots didn't mention is that most of them had no petrol and uh, so you had to you knew when you were driving say Moscow to Minsk you had to make sure you started off with a full tank because it was virtually impossible finding bought uh, tokens or vouchers on the border, official vouchers. by my watch it's 10 past 2 Belarusian time and uh, also in that um, the roads here should be a little bit smoother because we've just paid three dollars to drive on it and the Russians sometimes are a little bit outraged having to pay for uh, most of the roads here through the country these are toll roads and uh, they think that it's straight having to pay for them because the bulk of this road was constructed where it never actually got finished at all, so it stops halfway once it gets into Russia. But most of the route, once you get into Belarus, is actually not bad at all. Uh, there's some sections where they're still working on it and improving it so far.
Um, well, I'm just looking at the moment. Um, the sun has come out, but I'm afraid that the sun might be a little bit deceptive. Uh, possibly, possibly to instigate a plan B at the moment. Um, the plan B being, uh, if available, to make an earlier stop at a cafe or somewhere where there may be a toilet or toilets available rather than the bush. Uh, the last one I just went to check out, they only had one. <laughs> that was it. And large distances, sparsely populated. So it looks, uh, one could notice already one, once you cross the border uh, from Russia that it looks a little bit different. Another thing that the country is characterized by are also uh, vast forests everywhere. Uh, the population density here in Belarus is actually, uh, by European standards, is very low. It's approximately 50 people per square kilometer, so it does look very, very sparsely populated. Um, also, you will see less trappings of commercialism as we pass through the country as well. So whereas in Russia you can see advertising and billboards everywhere, you don't see very much of that here in Belarus. You'll see in Minsk there are some, but not very much. So the population here in this country, it's in the region of about 10.4 million people at the moment. But uh, the makeup is very, very varied. Uh, they are not all Belarus Belarusians, but uh, you have people living here who are Belarusians, there are people of Russian origin, Polish, uh, Ukrainian, from Kazakhstan, from Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, and so forth. And uh, most of the ethnic Belarusians are living mainly in the western part of the country. Um, also, many ethnic Belarusians emigrated from here too, so the proportion of Russians to Belarusians is very high. Um, in particular, uh, many Belarusians emigrated to countries like to Canada, to the United States, um, UK, other European countries. It's estimated that in the region of that one million Belarusians living abroad. The um, name of the country it translates, if you divide up the word Belarus, uh, uh, into two words, Biela, uh, which is the word for white, and Rus is Russia. And the name is interpreted in many different ways. And uh, there are various versions of this. Some people will say, well, it's white Russia. They associate it with politics. But this is actually not us. So it's associated, people uh, will say a white Russian politics, but this is actually not a, a correct estimate at all. Um, sometimes it's, it's linked to, you know, the civil war after the revolution, reds and whites, but that is just an uh, illusion that has no truth at all. Now, produced during Stalin's era, very early on, and it was uh, a political goal and ideal. And during the early years of collectivization, they say that people were literally starving. There was famine because many of the farmers, rather than give their land away uh, to the... Official uh, language of the country nowadays is Belarusian. And Belarusian is very, very close to Russian, Russian. and to Ukrainian. These three Slav languages are very, very close. Uh, they are, one could say people can understand each other when they're speaking, but as written languages, they are not the same. Um, statistically, 77% of the population of this country are native Belarusians, and about 14% are Russians. But uh, from the linguistic point of view, you will not find that number of people speaking the Belarusian language. Um, from, again, from the Soviet times, the language issue was something that <clears throat> was uh, very poignant here and in many other republics because it was uh, from Stalin's time onwards, it was a policy of the country to have this what they called Russification to be built from soil that was brought from all the different Soviet republics brought by hand. And it's now a place, apart from just being a monument, that's occupied very, very quickly. You'll see tomorrow again we're taking the route coming from Brest to Minsk, which is the route that the German forces occupied, especially uh, ones like a Lonely Planet. I always see that uh, many people have that when they're traveling. 
um, to the Russian alphabet. Yeah. So you can see the letter I they use just like the Latin letter mm. in the mirror, mirror for the E, the letter E. But otherwise, more or less, it's used uh, then electrical goods, things like refrigerators and so on, and also watches as well, which used to be known, uh, the name branding for them used to be the Luch Watch Factory. It's the focal point that it will reach is a square which is known as the Victory Square, so we can make a, a stop when we get there as well, so just for now. Then you can see massive construction work going on all the time. The city is expanding rather quickly, all these areas around here, this is all being built over the last five years. as a population would have an underground system and uh, Minsk reached in 1970 just uh, over one million their population and so they had an underground built and it looks like you can see here to accommodate all these and the economy here that Belarus has had rather a, a, an unusual uh, post-1991 independence history as well in that uh, the system here is kind of a mixture between a communist and a free market economy. It is not totally how it was during the Soviet times in that there was no free market whatsoever, that everything is state-owned. But after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Minsk, oh, sorry, Belarus formed its own republic, so they went from being known as the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic to taking the name Belarus, and they declared their independence. Uh, one of their main problems as being independent is, as with many, many of the other republics, is that uh, they were provided with fuel supplies, the most important thing, they needed gas, and uh, the various republics provided each other with services and uh, goods at uh, near on cost price, and they were unable to actually pay for this. They say that already by the mid-90s, they had something like in excess of $450 billion worth of debt to Russia. And uh, so they formed uh, this uh, called CIS, Commonwealth of Independent States, but within it they are still an independent country. Um, they still today I mean, don't have the, the fuel supply that they need, but they do have certain raw materials available. Um, the president uh, at the moment is in his third term, President Lukashenko I mentioned, who was elected to power uh, by the people, but uh, many people here say that the, the last election was rigged and that he has also uh, changed the terms of the con It's quite interesting, if you look at these apartment blocks over towards the right, you can see some of the decorations on the facades and on the sides of the mosaics as well, uh, very much this uh, socialist realism style of architecture, of um, design and uh, painting. but. Um, nevertheless, it just distinguishes each building one from the other. And uh, Russians are always very scathing about Belarus, but um, it was always a little bit different even during the Soviet years. So if you look on the left, look at this building here. This is the, the new library that they have just completed with its 13 million vol or capable of having 13 million volumes. At the mo moment, apparently, 8 million volumes books in there. Uh, it's also we're always sort of quite scathing about Belarusians a little bit. And if you were to travel here, say, with the Russian guide, then they would just shrug their shoulders and say, well, what's all the fuss about here? What's the difference? It's all part of one country. And they're always making a fuss on pair at all to Russia, um, even when they 
adopted their own currency. Their own currency was devalued so many times that the Russian ruble was like hard currency here. Um, but you look at built in the 70s, and uh, then there's a park here on the left-hand side, the main factories, which is the uh, former uh, Luch factory, which was the name of the watch factories. They still produce watches here, but the brand name has changed. So again, you'll see, looking at the buildings uh, on either side of the street, this is uh, quite reminiscent, if you can remember when we were leaving St. Petersburg, the exit that we took, which was the Moscow Avenue, Moscow Prospect, and houses, buildings that were all built during the 1950s, during the Stalin era, but you can see with quite elaborate facades, uh, not high rises, but usually four or five story buildings. And these all, so they were built according to this communist ideal that everything should be local. So on top, you can see there are usually four or five stories of houses and on the ground level, always were. And it's the Academy of Sciences. Many of the buildings are right. You can see the green one with the white columns. That's part of a technical University. institute. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. with a statue in the middle which is dedicated to a Belarusian writer author called Jakob Kola so here's the figure in the middle and around him are figures uh, from his different works he is uh, known as a classic Belarusian author and then the avenue will lead, you'll see already in a moment, there will be a monument coming up in the center of the street, which is the Victory Monument. Allowed to park along here, but we can maybe make a short photo stop because this is uh, the focal point of the city you can get. domed building, which is a Belarusian circus, state circus. And uh, they still have uh, their own circus company here, and the circus is still quite popular, but uh, I of the, the city's <laughs> main squares, main square. with the, what's called the Palace of the Republic, which are oh, government square, buildings yeah. over here towards <laughs> the right-hand side. Uh, buildings behind us, this looks like a theater, like the Bolshoi, almost, uh, is a trade union building. And the advert, again, that you can see on top of this building ahead of us, the Gorizont, uh, is an electrical company, which is the company that Lee Harvey Oswald, where he was. Central Square and the Victory Square and the avenue between them. This is the equivalent of uh, what would be like Red Square in Moscow, in that they had... Uh, you'll see just alongside the cathedral here towards the right, we cross over this avenue and then you can see again this is part oh, of the Svislach yeah. River and the area just coming up now towards the right hand side where you can see the various colored houses. Uh, this is not, none of it is original at all. It was completely reconstructed after the war and reconstructed in the style of an old town and there are bars and cafes and water. And then there is a modern of... Uh, yeah, the police drive a tractor. <laughs> That's what happens when you park your car where you shouldn't. <laughs> um, 
and it goes over, can you see there's a little island it goes over to, the tiny monument uh, in the middle of it, and uh, that's known as the Island of Tears, and it was put there in the 19th island, so that's the Island of Tears. And uh, this is just a great island sports hall yeah. that you can see on the right hand side here. By that uh, sports hall, actually talking about uh, well tragic events, uh, there is uh, also a little uh, monument there, memorial, commemorating in 1999, there was an accident there. I mentioned the city has this metro system, and back in 1999, there were 93 people were killed, and literally hundreds of people were injured, crushed, and people were killed. Mm. And uh, then, Towards the right, that tall building that you can see is the Belarus Hotel. So that tall building is a hotel. Then there the, are the, also the two hotels along here, uh, towards the, the left and towards the right, one over towards the right, which is the Planeta Hotel. The <laughs> Sometimes the Planeta and the other one towards the left, Jubilania, are jokingly referred to as the Sher Sheraton and the Hilton, the Planeta being the Hilton, the d then the lifts will be just uh, beyond the reception, you'll see straight on. Uh, the restaurant is, as one comes into the lobby, you'll see a corridor going along the left hand side, and then there is a stairway. Generally we are, there is an, a room on the first level, so I will just check for the dinner time when we arrive, what time dinner is booked for us. Normally uh, it's requested for seven o'clock, but I will confirm that. So you can link to the main hotel by a corridor and it's up. Then I will put the uh, departure time up on the... Hotel, hotel we stay today. Huh? Uh, I don't know. 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 Afghanistan. This one. This memorial. He will die in Afghanistan. That they, they go to the yeah. island. In Beijing, we just went to uh, the, uh, the Imperial Palace, Palace Summer Square. Palace, and uh, like, yeah, Tiananmen Square. Yeah, Tiananmen Square. Yeah. No, 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 no Kuala. is beautiful. Do you see the terracotta? Uh, oh, oh yeah, terracotta. Uh -huh. Oh. Because we went to Hong when we went to Hong Kong, we went to the border of Hong Kong. Go 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 down here, go down here. Get the restaurant right here. Okay.
just now that building looks like closed. The shopping mall, I think. You know the white one? No, maybe on the other side of the street. The other side. You want to get back there? Yeah. Because here you can't can get any souvenir. <laughs> and tomorrow. Nhiều khi tụi nó chít cửa đây chặt chội nè. Phía Island Memorial. Due to memorial for the people who died in Afghanistan. This is Tear Island. A roast by the priest. Nice spot, nice spot for a picture. No, that one looks one like one Egyptian. They must have Egyptian? Some uh, kind Egyptian. Of no, no, <laughs> this one for <laughs> Afghanistan. The memorial for the people here. They go to Afghanistan to fight oh, and then die. Uh, you remember, you, you hold yeah, yeah, yeah. told you? Yeah, yeah that, that uh, no, not uh, Egyptian, no, Afghanistan people. Uh -huh. If uh, they, maybe, maybe we can go. You can go in. Yeah, I know. Because I saw a chair there. People, maybe for the. <laughs> That's my very, very nice structure. Okay, we are uh, going back. They drop you. We are leaving Belarus. Uh, uh, go to Poland. giấu gì đằng chưa đằng đằng trên đầu á cắt mà hay tại giấu như như cái dấu ớ của mình starts towards the border. Uh, normally, as I said, we count about four hours with driving and then we'll make petrol stations. But again, the, the problem with most of these is that they don't have the facilities. They are...
yet, but uh, will come up soon before we uh, get to the border with Poland. There's a large area which is a national park called the Bielowieszcza Puszcza. It, uh, it extends from Belarus into Poland, and it's a crossing from one country to the other and yet although the geography and the geology doesn't change at all you'll see that landscape changes quite quickly because of the let's say the social nature of the two countries and whilst you can see around here wide open spaces the area is very sparsely populated uh, houses dotted around the place and uh, small uh, farms and then later collective farms but it looks like very wide open. Start in the middle of the road, uh, they will have a series of names of cities from the former Soviet Union. They have actually all the the names have been changed or the symbols for them they were formerly while this country was part of the soviet union they had all the names of the cities in russian but now as belarusian is the official name of the country they have changed them into the belarusian version which uh, again to the foreigner it wouldn't uh, hit you in the face straight away but it does look quite uh, significant when you are coming here if you can read these signs um sent here for construction religious architecture for constructing buildings and uh, they are sent from Russia and uh, it is rather an elaborate looking construction you can see coming up towards the left hand side and again because of this concept that there there was no reconstruction during the Soviet times so you can see for example the symbol of the city of Moscow Moskva over towards the left and with the symbol of the city and also the award different churches old churches and rebuilt ones or newly built ones after the war and there are some very interesting experimental religious architecture that you will see in Poland both tra traditional architecture and experimental architecture which you don't really see here they are trying to copy old these were all again reconstructed everything built after the war yes. Yes. Is it corner? The, the press, the Sydney near press, near the border of uh, Paris and uh, Poland.
sign on the right hand side telling you that you're entering the Republic of Poland. Also entering the EU as well here. So you can see just behind the police van there's one as well for European Union. Uh, when we get up to the Polish checkpoint we just need to go and pay the road taxes various here and then we'll be on our way. So if you can just stay on the coach while we do that and then we will press on from here on to Warsaw. Too bad by Belarusian standards that um, there are certain things one can physically uh, calculate timing wise that uh, when they have to actually process the passports there. You see price that they paid for this building and usually they will.